referring among other things or mainly to the fact that the activity is mainly social based on, uh, on networks, uh, communities, etc., uh, and rather than uh, person to person. Uh, do you think Learning 2.0 supports inclusive lifelong learning? Within the framework of the prevailing institutions, I think the answer is basically or most of the time negative because I think the uh, formal, uh, the, the institution of formal education today, mainly primary and secondary education, to lesser extent higher education, are immune in a way to the impact of the internet and they have kept rejecting all the impact in the last 30 years. So there is no reason to believe that they will accept it now. So within their walls, I don't think they will make any change. Outside the hall, there is a lot of inclusion and interaction going on, of course. Um, my second question is, do you think isolated experiments in Learning 2.0 can be mainstreamed in education? For the reason I just mentioned, the answer is no. What as, long, as, long, as long as education has, well, there are a few countries, like in Scandin the Scandinavian countries or Holland, which are, have relatively open and flexible culture in general, and also in, the educational system is, is rather open naturally. So in, in, in case of, of, of the very few examples of open, not open in the sense of open education, but relatively open organizational, organizationally, systems, uh, experiments that were been, have been done in a laboratory setting or an artificial setting might have, uh, 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 might be integrated. But most other educational system, including in the big uh, countries like the United States and most European countries, etc., are too rigid to allow it. Mm. They are hostile to it. And my last question is, um, actually, you probably just answered. <laughs> okay. uh, do you think learning 2.0 will ever fundamentally change educational landscapes? Well, I did answer it because if you think in the long term, let's say 10 to 15, 20 years from now, the power of the internet and all the very uh, deep uh, changes, radical changes it brings with it to society will overcome the, the antagonism of educational system. And the wall of educational systems will crumble in one way or another. But uh, it hasn't happened until now. I was hoping all, that it would, would, should happen, but it didn't. And it's, it will happen. Uh, sometimes in the future, I don't know when, it can be why, it, wh when, it can be very sudden, like uh, the fall of the Egyptian president, like the collapse of the Berlin Wall. I mean, it might be one of uh, this kind of event, or it might be uh, take place gradually, I don't know. But I mean, it, it, eventually it will happen, but not in the near future. And the. Uh let me just ask one more question. Um, we talk a lot about the target groups of inclusive education, inclusive distance learning. Um, do you think these target, group, target groups can be really reached in their variety and what, in their what extent? What do you mean when you say we talk about target groups? I don't understand. Well, the students or, or in terms of inclusive projects, the seniors, the dropouts from school, um, or those who don't have access to uh, education, do you think they could be reached? I think that they can be reached, but again, it's not the question of technology. It's a question of the culture of the society. Mm. And I think societies that were open and include, inclusive to start with, again, like the Scandinavians, have done it without technology. 
and they will continue to do it maybe better with uh, technology because there are very strong social economic powers at work here. Technology by itself will not change, at least on it, not in the short term. Thank you very much. You remember what